I lost members of my family. One body has been recovered, while others are still missing. Bajibo boat mishap, that toll rises. Pressure mounts on authorities to strengthen waterway safety regulations. Yet to recover from impact of flooding, Borno State confirms cholera outbreak in five local governments. It's very important that all of us are aware of this disease and take precautions. And federal government directs overhaul of Nigeria's road safety architecture to address safety issues on Nigerian roads. Good evening and thank you for joining us on NTA Network News. I am Lami Ali. Jennifer will be bringing us stories from Lagos. Musa is on the business bit tonight and Ayo Deji Makinde is also standing by for some sporting news. So Ayo, what's the latest in the sports in Nigeria today, especially football? Well, strategic decisions by the Nigeria Football Federation as far as football administration in the country is concerned. And Paul Pogba has just hit the bullseye concerning his ban. All right, join us for details on that and more in the course of the bulletin. Remember, you can follow us live on our website, nta.ng slash live. NTA News Now on X and other social media platforms displayed on the screen. The federal government has directed the implementation of overhaul of Nigeria's road safety measures aimed at ensuring safety and reduce road traffic accidents across the nation. Vice President Kashim Shetima gave the directive during a meeting with the leadership of the Federal Road Safety Corps, led by its co-marshal, Sheikh Mohammed, as the presidential villa Abuja. State House correspondent Abdurrahman Jibrila reports Thus, the Vice President will inaugurate the National Road Safety Advisory Council, saddled with the responsibility of reducing traffic accidents by half before 2030, stressing the urgent need to address the increasing road accidents on the highways and in the cities caused by non-adherence to traffic regulations. The Vice President, who chairs the National Road Safety Advisory Council, highlighted the importance of leveraging technology and enforcing discipline to improve road safety, emphasizing the interconnected nature of road safety with broader security concerns. Co Marshal Shehu Mohammed said the National Road Safety Advisory Council is a critical aspect of the updated Nigeria Road Safety Strategy 2021 to 2030 outlining the council's primary functions to include setting national road safety targets, coordinating efforts between federal, state and local governments, and overseeing the implementation of strategic initiatives. The council's membership includes six governors representing the six geopolitical zones, various ministers, the national security advisor, and the presidents of the Association of Local Governments of Nigeria. The Minister of Defence, Mohamed Badaru, has reiterated President Bola Tinubu's commitments to troops' welfare and training in the ongoing renewed drive to further secure the nation. Defence correspondent Ismail Musa reports that this was at the graduation ceremony for Army War College Nigeria Course 8, 2024. You individually and collectively... With this symbolic order, ceremony... These military officers have been conferred fellows of the Army War College Nigeria, a prestigious institution established in 2017 as the highest professional military education institution of the Nigerian Army. The college mission is to produce trained and inspired operational level leaders for the Nigerian Army with strategic skills in planning, conduct of operations and general application of land power in a joint environment. Be careful of solutions you prefer today as they may become problems for tomorrow. There will be high demand from you for excellence, knowledge, ideas, options, and quality service, among others. The Minister of Defense charged the graduates to lead with integrity 
and be dynamic in the quest to combat threats. True leader. Always remembering that true leadership is about serving others and making decisions that reflect the highest military values of honor and greatness. Lieutenant Colonel Akmil Regis from Cote d'Ivoire is the best graduating allied officer. The work college is not an easy course, so you have to be ready to follow this course intellectually and physically. A total of 75 officers from the Nigerian Armed Forces, six from allied countries, were conferred fellows of the Army War College Nigeria. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. The Nigerian Air Force will continue to make significant strides in indigenous military manufacturing as part of its broader strategy to enhance national security and self-reliance. The chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Hassan Abubakar, stated this as the Defense and Services Transformation and Innovation branches of the Armed Forces of Nigeria seminar. Defense correspondent Olajide Bello reports. Air Marshal Aubaka emphasized the need to adopt innovation to address evolving security challenges with the ongoing initiatives aimed at boosting the NAF's operational capabilities. The Chief of the Air Staff revealed that NAF is in the final stages of negotiating a technology transfer agreement with Bessel Zenit Prom of Serbia for the acquisition of 57mm rocket technology to significantly enhance Nigeria's ability to manufacture advanced rocket systems, strengthening the nation's armament capabilities. The NAF is collaborating with UA Vision of Portugal to fully operationalize the Segumi unmanned area vehicle within Nigeria with a view to provide a crucial boost to the NAF's surveillance and reconnaissance capabilities and enabling more effective monitoring of national airspace. The Defense Headquarters and Services Transformation and Innovation branches of the Armed Forces of Nigeria convene quarterly to review the progress of ongoing transformation initiatives within the Nigerian military. Olajide Bello, NTA News. Now more than 40 bodies have so far been recovered and about 150 people rescued, while scores are still declared missing in the River Niger boat mishap, which occurred in Bajibu, a community in Mokwe local government area of Niger State. Fatima Ali reports that a delegation from the Niger State government and officials of the National Hydroelectric Power Producing Areas Development Commission, who were in the area, for an on the sport assessment advocate full enforcement of regulatory laws on safety on waterways to curtail avoidable occurrences. People of Bajibo and Evans are still in grief over the mishap, mourning the loss of their loved ones as small bodies are being recovered for burial. I lost members of my family. One body has been recovered while others are still missing. More than 300 passengers were reported to be on board the ill-fated boat which took off from Moody in Kwara State at about 9 o'clock in the night headed for Bajibo, a community in Mokwa local government area of Niger State for a festivity before the tragedy struck. Because of this village, it's a big village. They get small, 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 small village inside this water. Plenty, rent. All of them at this market and they come every Friday, every Friday. Both Niger State Governor and Managing Director of NIPADEC were represented on the condolence visit to the people of the affected communities. And we sympathize with the people. The boat users drivers we are not doing enough. If there is a serious law that will make them not to carry overload, make them not to travel in the night, I think all these boat missiles will come to an end. And IPADEC reiterates its commitment to ensuring safety on waterways through its sensitization programs and award of contracts for the removal of logs on waterways from Bajibu in Niger to Kebi State. Fatima Liu, NTA News. And former President Muhammadu Buhari joins the governments and the people of Kwara and Niger states as they continue to receive dozens of dead bodies and 100 plus others still unaccounted for following the disastrous sinking of their overloaded boat crossing the river Niger a few days ago. In a message to the states whose citizens were mostly affected, the former president said he was extremely pained by the agonizing boat's capsize and that his heart and prayers were for the repose of the dead and the successful rescue of several dozens of mostly women and children still unaccounted for. 
Former President Buhari joins the prayers for the rescue of those still missing. He prays that Allah will repose the souls of the deceased and the return of those missing alive and well to their families. Borno State Government has confirmed a cholera outbreak in the state with 17 cases in five local governments. Fatima Isa brings us the details. Expected to be cholera were earlier sent for testing, out of which 17 indicated positive of the deadly disease. Borno State Commissioner of Health and Human Services, Professor Babu Malamgana, attributed the outbreak to the recent flood that devastated parts of Meduguri and Environs, displacing about 2 million people, as well as resulting to contamination of portable drinking water. It's very important that all of us are aware of this disease and take precautions to ensure that you know this disease does not take root in our state. Though no reported case of fatality so far, the commissioner noted that cholera cases cholera. might now be on an increase across local government areas of Borno State, considering the fact that there are reported cases of the infectious disease in neighboring states of Adamawa and Yobe. He was emphatic that the state government has directed the ministry to carry out immediate intervention to every ramification to contain the menace. Humanitarian partners, including World Health Organization and MSF, have also set up facilities to handle suspected cases, in addition to making about 400,000 cholera vaccines available to contain further spread of the infectious disease. In Meduguri, Fatima Isa, NTA News. The federal government has called for collective efforts from states and key stakeholders in the water and sanitation sector to accelerate the disbursement of World Bank support funds for improved water and sanitation services in the country. Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, Professor Joseph Utsav, made the call during the opening of the midterm review roundtable with governors of participating states in Abuja. Usman Zubairu has the story. The objective of this sustainable urban and rural water supply sanitation and hygiene saw wash meet and review round table meeting and to update and assess the performance of pilot states and also chart the path for the program's implementation in benefiting states. Discussions will resolve around challenges requiring the attention of state governors which affect cash flow and hinder the achievement of desired results. Minister Water One Resources urged participating states to take on ownership of the program. We are going to visit all the states, the seven state governors in their various states and they will show us what they have on ground and we can now explain to them and put them in the right direction of what is expected of them. Uh, we are facing significant delays and challenges that need immediate attention. Governor of Kassana State, Umar Dukarada, noted that states are beginning to better understand the program, acknowledging that the low implementation rates stem from a lack of clarity. Even though Catalan State came out as number one among the participating states in terms of the implementation, but our result also is very poor because it's about 40 percent. And uh, we are expected to at least uh, reach about 70, 80 percent implementation. The expected outcome of the program, which is in its third year, is that participating states should increase investment in wash services for Nigeria to achieve set targets in Abuja, Osmansberg, and T News. President Bola Tinubu has conferred the nation's second highest national honor, the Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger, on the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas. In his 64th Independence Anniversary speech on 1st October, President Tunubu conferred the Commander of the Federal Republic on the Speaker and the Deputy President of the Senate. This development led to a debate in the House of Representatives on Wednesday, calling on the President to confer a higher honor on the Speaker. A statement by the Special Advisor to the President on Information and Strategy, Bayo Ononuga, indicates that President Tunibu was persuaded by the House of Representatives' position and has decided to remedy the historical error and oversight. He has therefore decided to upgrade the Speaker to Grand Commander of the Order of the Niger from Commander of the Federal Republic in accordance with the National Order of Presidents. The Speaker, the President of the Senate, 
other principal offices of the National Assembly and the Chief Justice of Nigeria will be formally decorated with their new honors later. You're watching News at 9 on the Network Service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We now take a short break. More stories when we return. Thank you for saying. The River State Police Command says it will not participate in the October 5th local government election in the state in line with a federal high court order restraining the police from providing security for the said election. According to a statement by the police public relations officer, Grace Iringi Koko, the command is acting on the advice of the force legal department, which borders on the ruling from the Federal High Court of September 30, 2024, and takes precedence over the litany of court judgments on the matter. The command calls for adherence to orders and encourages all parties to seek appropriate legal redress if they feel aggrieved by any decision or actions related to the election process. It directs all area commanders, divisional police officers and tactical commanders to ensure full compliance with the judgments of the Federal High Court. The statement also calls on citizens to remain peaceful and orderly and cooperate with law enforcement agencies in upholding the rule of law during this crucial period. Meanwhile, Governor Simina Lai Fubara has reaffirmed that the River State local government election scheduled for Saturday, October 5th, 2024, will still hold. He was speaking during a press conference Friday in Government House, Port Harcourt. Osinachi Samuel brings us the details. The governor, while addressing newsmen, affirmed his commitment to conduct a peaceful local government council election in the state, stressing that there is no cause for alarm as regards the news of the Nigerian police withdrawing its service from the election. The Supreme Court gave a judgment that all local government activities must be conducted by elected officers. The President of the Federal Republic in agreement with the state government, state governors, they agree that compliance to this judgment should be in 90 days with effect from the judgment. And every other state are conducting election to ensure that they comply with the directive, not just the, not just the Supreme Court, but also the understanding that we have with Mr. President. And what River State is also doing is not different from that. The election is expected to hold this Saturday, October 5, 2024, in Port Harcourt, Osunachi Samuel, NTA News. Retirement after meritorious service marks another phase in the life of civil servants that is worth planning for. This is why the federal government designed policies and programs to aid the public servants to have a comfortable life after service. Abbas Mekeno has a report on one of such programs initiated through the Bureau of Public Service Reforms. People had unbearable experiences in their retirement life or failure to adequately plan for it. The retirement training program for retiring officers of federal parastatters, therefore, is one of the cardinal programs of the Bureau of Public Service Reforms to prepare the retiring officers to face the future and to also ensure that the quality of their lives does not depreciate after retirement. We train them on skills acquisition so that as they exit the public service, they have something else to do. Participants are expected to learn new thinking that will equip them for the challenges ahead after their retirement. The program was very good. We appreciate the facilitators. They've done a very good job. You cannot just wait till you retire before you prepare. Start doing something. Some of us started early, and that's why we're not feeling the retirement. The 2024 pre-retirement training lasted for five days with participants from various MDAs under the federal government from the Northeastern. Ingombi, Abbas Mekanu, NTA News. In view of allegations that the northern region is being neglected in the distribution of the ongoing renewed hope agenda on road infrastructure, the Federal Ministry of Works says the report is unfounded. 
a total of 2,735 kilometers of the legacy projects have been initiated by the current administration, with the north having 1,414 kilometers, while the south takes 1,321 kilometers, amounting to a percentage ratio of 52 to 48, respectively. Out of 82 Sukuk funded ongoing projects, the North has 45, while the South has 37 projects. Out of the 260 emergency projects, 98 are being executed in the South, while 108 in number are in the North. On the 44 road projects being executed under the Road Tax Credit Scheme, 23 are domiciled in the North, while 21 are in the South. The list further illustrates the sense of fairness. The Federal Executive Council approved the construction of 258 kilometers three-lane carriageway in Kebi and Sokoto states as part of the 1,000-kilometer Sokoto-Badagri superhighway. The distribution of the aforementioned approved projects shows that fairness is a fundamental principle in the renewed hope agenda of Mr. President. The chairman, Northwest Governors Forum, Umar Dukwarada, says governors in the zone are collaborating in fighting poverty, insecurity and hunger, among other social challenges in the zone. The forum's chairman and governor of Katsina State, alongside his Jaga State counterpart, Umar Namadi, disclosed this in Dusi while on a walking visit to the state. Mohammed Musa Askira has the reports. Well, in Dusi, Jigao State Capital, Governor Umar Dikorada was led by Governor Umar Namadi to one of the palliative shops, an initiative he created in each of the 27 local government areas of the state, where civil servants visit to buy assorted food items at a 10% discount and pay at the end of the month. I was able to see the system and I saw the kind of people that are benefiting from the system and I came like a study tour to understand the system, the technicalities of it, and I've already directed my special advisor to come uh, to the ministry, study the system, and see how Kazuna State is going to implement uh, the Canton Sauki system. The Chairman Northwest Governors Forum was impressed by the development initiatives of the Jigawa State Government, noting that Katsina has a lot to learn from the well thought out development programs of Governor Umar Namadi in Jigawa. We as government, we should do everything possible to see that we have reduced that level of suffering from our people. The Northwest are putting themselves together and uh, we are collectively addressing the issues at a regional level. That we need to thank Allah that we have a uh, uh, bumper harvest this year, and that is one thing that will continue to improve. Uh, before the end of the month, we need to come be a meeting uh, of the Northwest Governors Forum so as to discuss more about agriculture to see how we can promote agriculture within the region. The two governors were at Jahun local government areas alongside Emir Abdutse Hamim Nuhu Muhammad Sanusi for the commissioning of Jahun Central Jumat Mosque. From Dutse, Muhammad Musa Askira, NTA News. Jennifer Igwe is in our Lagos Network studio with more reports. Over to you, Jenny. Studio with Thank you, Lami. The Nigeria Customs Service says it will not rest on its oars, but continue to deploy all necessary resources and strategies towards complementing efforts at discouraging the activities of drug barons across the nation's seaports and its environs. Customs Area Controller, Tinkan Island Port Command, Dera Nadi re-emphasized this while handing over three seized containers loaded with 342 kilograms of cannabis indica to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, in Lagos. Diana Ajale reports. The view from a distance may show no hidden agenda, but containers with goods like orders inside a Tinkan Island port set to navigate out of the passageway as usual. However, after physical examinations conducted by the law enforcement agencies at different times, quantities of cannabis indica weighing 
342 kilograms were discovered and confiscated from three of such containers in the months of August. The Customs Service puts the street value of the illicit drugs at 682 million naira and says further investigation will expose more facts about the seizure. Each uh, cartel. The Customs and the NDLEA have plans to strengthen their collaboration and intelligence to ensure the target of ending importation of illicit drugs is met. In collaboration with other security agencies and other regulatory agencies, we check the menace of illegal importation and of illegal substances and dangerous substances being imported into country. We are more than committed to deliver on this mandate. Previously, we have some countries tagged as source countries where drugs come from. What you are seeing now, they are all coming from Canada, which we never expected that drugs will come from there. You can imagine the damage this will cause if it gets into our market. Officials say more hard drugs would be handed over to the NDLEA after necessary documentation. In Lagos, Diana Ajale, NTA News. Now adhering to its core value of protecting families from germs, world-renowned manufacturers of household cleaning and consumer products, S.C. Johnson, has unveiled its Nixodem brand of soaps in Nigeria. Michael Olaleo reports that the three range of soaps guarantee germ-free skin protection while staying extra fresh. Your uh, experience of Nixodem? From we dwelt on Nixodem and it, 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 it gave us the beauty we were looking for. And our guys were, you know, uh, all over us. Testimony of this nature embodies the core values defining the age-long tradition of Nixodem in offering full protection against James. In fact, in Nigeria, this brand of cream is a household signature that quickly comes to mind whenever a solution to various skin infection is profiled. The unveiling of Nixodem soap is riding on these proving records, and the excitement at this event is tied around a simple tagline, gem-free skin is confident skin. I'm happy that we're going to just have fewer products to use on the kids that we know that are safe, that are mild, and that will help with germs and bacteria that kids tend to bring home. Existing in three variants of green, blue, and pink, representing original, cool, and baby, the soap is available in 120 and 75 grams, while the baby version only has 75 grams. To the manufacturer, Gem protection is key while offering gentle and mild skin solution. There's something for everyone. If you're a young person, you want your skin to look good, you want your skin to look fly, Nixodem is for you. While Nixodem seeks to attract existing soap users to the brand, using its visible 36 outdoor sites, the company believes it will equally increase current user of the products based on high satisfaction, which in turn will expand its user's base. The company said the products will be available in all markets in Nigeria, including open and hyper stores, with the promise to periodically organize shoppers' engagement programs. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. We'll take a short break now. The news will continue afterwards with Musa Abubakar, who will be giving us business news. Uh, thanks for being there. Let's talk business. The Director General of the Small and Medium Enterprise Development Agency of Nigeria, Smedan, Charles Hody, says the agency under the supervision of the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment is working to make one million micro, small and medium enterprises export ready within the next two years. Speaking at the ongoing National Conference for MSMEs, Odi highlighted Nigeria's low export value currently at 7.6% and noted that the government is leaving no stone unturned to uh, show up the numbers by equipping MSMEs and tackling the bottlenecks they face to position them for exports. 
And a small business has a problem in Nigeria today, no matter what state it is. That problem is escalated to the BMOs, the BMOs take it to the State Council of SMS. If the governor of the state cannot solve it, the governor brings it to us at the National Council. If you cannot solve it, if I cannot solve it at the Secretariat, I take it to the chairman who is the vice president. If the vice president cannot solve it, they take it to the president. If the president cannot solve it, I joke that you take it to God. But it will never, there will never ever be a, a, a scenario where a small business is not feeling supported in Nigeria anymore. Because the advocacy for small businesses has gone to another level. Nigerian private sector activity expanded for the second straight month in September as new orders rose, especially for chemical and pharmaceutical products. Later central bank survey showed the central bank's uh, purchase and managers index of uh, private sector activity rose to 50.5 points from 50.2 points in August, above the 50-point line that denotes uh, increases in activity. Now to the capital market. The equities market uh, reversed previous session negative sentiment to close the week on a bullish note. The whole share index uh, rose by 0.47% to close at uh, 97,520.54 points. At the close of the last trading day on the exchange, a total of 320.7 million shares were traded in 8,763 deals, amounting to a market value of uh, 6 billion naira. This reflects a 19% increase in volume and 11% decrease in turnover and 2% rise in the number of deals. Equity capitalization increased to 56 trillion naira. United Bank for Africa recorded the highest volume of 36.7 million traded shares, followed by Sterling Bank, Ella Lakes, and Lafarge Wapco. Well, that's a quick look at uh, business news. The news continues with Lamy. Thank you, Musa. President Bola Tinubu congratulates Chief Henry Ajamole, the former chairman of the Action Congress AC, Action Congress of Nigeria, ACN, and the All Progressives Congress, APC, in Lagos State, on his 80th birthday. President Tinubu rejoices with the lawyer, businessman, and political ally, who also served as Commissioner for Special Duties in Lagos State during the president's tenure as governor. The president acknowledges, acknowledges Chief Ajamole's lifetime of service, selfless leadership, and immense contributions to the state and the nation. He believes that Chief Ajamole's remarkable leadership qualities have been evident since his early days as a student union leader and have shown through his work in the courtroom, boardroom, political arena, and active membership of Lagos State's well-respected Governance Advisory Council. President Chinubu prays for the continued well-being of the octogenarian and all members of his household. Similarly, President Bola Chinubu felicitates with former Governor of Ondo State, Olushagu Mimiko, on his 70th birthday and rejoices with him for attaining the biblical milestone of three scores and ten. President Tinubu has Mimiko's contributions to his state and the nation as a commissioner for health at two different times as Minister of Housing, Secretary to the Ondo State Government and Governor from 2009 to 2017 are deeply appreciated. The President prays that Almighty God will continue to grant the former Governor wisdom and good health and hopes Dr. Mimiko will actively participate in Nigeria's development and contribute to its prosperous future. In recognition of its inspiring reportage on aging which enhance public positive perception and value, the Nigerian Television Authority has been honored with the Age-Friendly Public Service and Elder Justice Advocacy Award. Elizabeth Omori reports that this was at an award ceremony to recognize organizations, individuals, and state governments accelerating actions in geriatric care. Of the, the silence has been broken and the aged in Nigeria can now live life to the fullest as advocacy on their dignity and rights strengthens. This event is a testament to the several moves by the federal government to remove barriers hampering all-round development 
of senior citizens in the country. Key actors in the care sector advocate reorientation on aging, improved health services, and abolishment of unfriendly cultural practices against older persons. Your funding is really low for the millions of persons that you are in charge of. So in the 2025 budget, we are aggressively pursuing that. Older persons' right to income security, older persons' right to continuing engagement is affected by discrimination across all the levels. In the NTA, royal foundations, institutions, non-governmental organizations, and state governments are part of those recognized for their commitment to promote social investments in aging for longevity. Young people must stop undermining the intelligence and wisdom of the aged. Anywhere in the country, outside the country, treat them just the way you can picture yourself when you get to that age. Goodwill Ambassadors of Age Friendly Services and Elder Justice Advocacy of the NSCC were also unveiled. Elizabeth Omori, NT News. The Minister of Police Affairs, Senator Ibrahim Gaidem, has secured commitments from the Turkish government to modernize policing infrastructure in Nigeria through the introduction of modern security enablers. The minister, who led Nigeria's delegation to the 2024 Internal Security Exhibition at Ankara, Turkey, noted that the ongoing police reforms has police equipping as one of its strong pillars, hence the need to seek support from strategic partners in the short and medium term, while in placing measures to deepen local manufacturing of critical security infrastructure in Nigeria as long-term measures. Accordingly, the Turkish government promised to train Nigeria police officers in modern investigation techniques. Meanwhile, directors in the Ministry of Police Affairs have signed a performance bond for the smooth implementation of assigned tasks in line with priority two of the renewed HOPE agenda. Time to take another break. Do stay tuned for more reports. And latest news from the world of sports is next with Ayo DG. It's over to you. Thanks, Lami. The Nigeria Premier Football League returns this weekend with matches to be decided across different centers nationwide. High flying tabletopers Remo Stars will hope to maintain their 100% record when they play against Quara United on Saturday. Ayimba International are at home to Katsina United in Abba with both clubs. Lobby Stars entertaining shooting stars. At the Oriental Derby between reigning champions Enugu Rangers and Abia Warriors take center stage on Saturday at the Cathedral with second placed Rivers United and Aqua United facing off in the South-South Derby. The Nigeria Football Federation is upscaling synergies in line with presidential priority on sports development, grassroots talent discovery, effective administration and management. NFF President Ibrahim Gusol expatiated on this while highlighting subsets of targets including qualification for major football tournaments in the world. Across all age grades of national teams while focusing on improvement of grassroots talent discovery and all tiers of league football in the country. So many other things and the way you saw our leagues, uh, league that is improving, especially the Premier League, uh, you see that uh, now any team can go away and play their match and win an away match and come out uh, without any hindrance. And uh, we also, because we try to make sure that uh, we improve in the area of officiating, especially in the area of the referees. Hostilities resume in the English Premier League this Saturday with Crystal Palace playing at home to leaders Liverpool in the early kickoff. Arsenal are at home to Southampton while Leicester City are taking Bournemouth in a match that would be live on the NTA network. In other fixtures, Manchester City will hope to make a swift return to winning ways in the league when they welcome Fulham to the Etihad. Uh, their neighbours, Manchester United, play away to Aston Villa in a clash that could decide manager Eric Ten Hag's future, while Chelsea will hope their good run of form continues against Nottingham Forests at Stamford Bridge. 
Let's also tell you that Pogba's four-year drug ban has been reduced to 18 months following a successful appeal at the Court of Arbitration for Sports. Pogba, who tested positive for DHEA in the first game of the 2023-2024 season, is free to start playing for Juventus again from March next year. Italy's anti National Anti-Doping Tribunal accepted the request of the Anti-Doping Prosecutor's Office to hand out a four-year ban last March, which is the standard length of ban under the World Anti-Doping Code. It means Pogba would not have returned to what football until March 2027. And that's your sports. It's back to Lamy. Many thanks, Ayo. Now, Nigeria's First Lady, Ulura Mitunibu, has described the late wife of Akwai Bom State Governor Patience Umo Eno as a peaceful and God fearing woman who truly loved her people. This was when she paid a condolence visit to the state governor, Pastor Umo Eno, as governor's lodge in Uyo. State House correspondent Adeni Taiwo reports. It was a wet morning in Uyo, the Akwaibom state capital, when Nigeria's first lady, Olura Mitinumbu, led other women on a condolence visit to the state governor, Pastor Umo Eno. A somber mood awaits at the governor's lodge with the death of the wife of the governor casting a dark pall. Despite the best of efforts, emotions bubbled to the surface as the first lady, Olura Mitinumbu, went down the memory lane on her relationship with the deceased. I want to thank God that despite the short time we had, I got to know her. Wonderful, God fearing woman peaceful, that loves her people, and doesn't want to engage in any quarrel. She urged Nigerians to always show love and care to those around them, irrespective of their differences. We believe that God knows when to call everybody home. She has finished her course. Despite we want her to stay behind, God will comfort you, sir. Comfort you, the children. And what she couldn't finish, you will finish. I've been talking to your dad. You will help your dad and support your dad. And we will be here for you. You know, your mom was a great woman. And I'm honored to have met her. For the governor, mourning his wife is not something that will go away soon. But he is comforted by the support extended by the first lady. Many times she would tell me, all of the calls, all of the prayers that the First Lady called, the First Lady called. She left at a young age, but I feel, by the grace of God, she left fulfilled. To honor the memory of his late wife, the governor promised to sustain the activities of our office through his daughter, Helen. The First Lady later signed a condolence register while special prayers were held for the repose of the soul of the deceased and comfort for the family during the grieving moment, from Ujo, Adeni Itaewo, NTA News. Here's a peek into Saturday's weather forecast. Hello and you're welcome to the weather forecast. We've had so much rains across most parts of the country. The intensity is thinning out over the southeast, but gaining momentum over the southwest. The eastern parts of the north and the western parts of the north looking like a rainy Friday night. As we get into Saturday, we still expect to see rain over most parts of the country, but not as much as what we've had between Thursday and Friday. I leave you with the outlook over other parts of the country. And that's Let's Look News for today. We appreciate you all being a part of it. Do have a good weekend.